So first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming, and uh, I'm very happy to be here to share with you uh, what we have done and uh, the field have uh, accomplished and uh, what we can do for the future. So the, the reason I am kind of as mentioned that th this disease is in the past was very, very bad, um, very, very lethal disease, one of the worst disease. But um, kidney cancer has become a disease that's much easier to manage um, and currently, for the metastatic clear cell kidney cancer, they will talk about it. Uh, most of patients are contracted with the metastatic disease. In the past, the medium survival is about a year. Now it's almost three. And then I think we we are moving towards that. In the next couple of years, I think we will move it to almost five years, uh, with all the other you know, all the trials, including immunotherapy or complex, more compound. Uh, targeted therapy. So I think this disease is actually, I think, is, is a poster child of what we can do um, for a kidney, for cancer, and it, not just kidney cancer. I think hopefully the, it, we can actually share the success with other disease time, and people can start to think about not just so afraid of, of cancer in, in general and really think about how we, we fight it and how we get rid of it. Okay, so. Uh, so my name is James, and I work at Memorial Sloan Kettering. I, I speak not uh, for myself. I always speak uh, in, in uh, they present the group that I, that, I, that I work with, and I'm very fortunate to have uh, many people working with me at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Uh, it's a group approach in team science, and that we really try to understand the disease better. Uh, I'm a physician scientist. I see patients half a day a week. Uh, I also run a laboratory, uh, helping to you know, Daniel Faber, Washu, Hopkins, um, but I never crossed the admin line. <laughs> so um, I, I never just came here about four years ago. Um, I, and I, I, the reason I came is really I really want to deal with this disease. Um, and that the, the, I think uh, I don't want to bring your attention to this, it, it's, and I want, want you guys to be aware of this, that kidney cancer, although is like eighth most common disease, uh, it, in the, in the U.S., um, but you can see that the funding from the government for kidney cancer is fall into this other part, okay? And this other part, maybe like one, maybe ten percent of that other part, belongs to ten twenty percent of the other part belong to kidney cancer research. That's why the, the kidney cancer research kind of didn't move too much. But uh, but but for the past couple of years, I, I think we made a lot of. <coughs> Wave and, and lots of progress, um, and I hopefully that you know all, some of you can you know be aware of this, and then hopefully we can get more of, of, of the research funding uh, for this disease. So, so think about it. You know, to me, I feel like in, if you really want to cure cancer, the first thing you have, you know the patient you know, most of the time nowadays go to radiology and they find something, and then if they find something that it, it, you know the surgical oncologist you know can take it out and try to take a look at it. Uh, and that's so, so now the, the, where am I? So this is double screen, so I need to figure out. <laughs> okay, so, so this small pieces or big pieces got cut off and, and, and be visualized by pathologists, and pathology would make a diagnosis about what kind of disease that you have. And once you have disease, if you localize disease, it will be operated and cured, uh, fortunately. And, and if for the patient that have a metastatic disease, disease spread out, uh, then it, it make start to see medical oncologists and the radiation oncologists and, and working with surgical oncologists, hopefully that we can still make a cure or at least extend the lifespan or change, uh, improve the quality of life of cancer patients. So this is all good and well, and the, the next thing to, the, this need to kind of all link together, you need to you know, have scientific-based uh, uh, studies and really understand the disease and really under in the past the trials all based on like okay in five thousand a thousand patients and try to see whether they respond or not nowadays I think this is a totally irresponsible behavior if we really want to conduct meaningful trials you need to know what patient to select first um, and that's sort of like a precision medicine uh, um, uh, 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 personalized medicine. I think that's very, very important. Otherwise, we're missing the big boat. Okay. So, it, so today is what I want to talk about is from you know from the pathologist standpoint, medical oncologist standpoint, and the scientific standpoint. 
of this part, I want you to kind of help you, uh, uh, kind of guide you through this, and hopefully you can understand cancer a little bit better. Um, in, in a very, very simple sense, why do we develop cancer? So, so this is just a single cell. So our body is made of like about 30 point, 37.2 trillion cells in our body. Every single cell has the same DNA, okay? Has three billion base pair of one copy, and there's another copy of it, which so are 46 chromosomes. So it's about six billion base pair in our DNA. And then think about it, and then the, the DNA make RNA, RNA make protein, protein, some of them and our structure, and it make metabolites. And that, with all these, they build up our body. So the body is consistent of 37.2 billion cells. They have like every single cell actually is sharing the exactly same three billion base pair. I would say six billion base pair because we have two copies of it. And the reason why, just like Jen is talking about, why we, it, this is so difficult to deal with for the past, you know, with the, the beginning of the human history is because it's just part of us. And the reason it is part of it is it's not coming, uh, it's just because we go through evolution. Then everybody you know, evolves different ways. Uh, and, and, and DNA is very, very stable. But if it evolves, if we don't have the capacity to evolve, we are not evolving, okay? So we will be the same a couple hundred millions of years ago. So that's, the, that's the, the capacity we inherit, that we have the capacity to mutate. Unfortunately, if the mutation go crazy, go too fast, and take, on, take a wrong route, then the cells become, try to be the host, and that's proliferate like crazy without further control, and that's taking over. And it's, that's from your body. The cancer is from your own cells. And that's why it's so difficult to, to take care of it. And the other layer of complexity is not just because it's all you. It's the other thing is really, it's because it's, you know, everybody, you know, different people, they have different genetic makeup and people get different kind of cancer. Uh, even within a, so you can see that different people they have, could have different cancer. And the other thing I will try to show you that is within the same patient, this is a kidney cancer of mine. So he has cancer here, this is the kidney, and he has metastasis here, this is spleen, this is liver. It, are, they, are they the same disease? It is a big question has been puzzling for us, but the kidney cancer she taught me a lot is many of them, even you take from here to here to here, they look, they start from the same origin, but they start to mutate and acquire different mutation. And they, through the acquiring different mutation, they become behave a little bit different. So that's why disease, it, it is a layer of complexity and heterogeneity that, that makes disease is very difficult to treat. And again, so as I said, that we start with cells and then we start with DNA. So the you know, so-called you know, anal analysis of big wholesale analysis of DNA is called you know, genomics. And then wholesale analysis of you know, the RNA made from DNA is transcriptomics. And then the, you know, trans you know, RNA, the purpose of RNA mainly is to make, make protein and protein is proteomics, and then proteins mainly try to kind of build up our body, conduct all the enzymatic reaction. Every time I'm moving my hands, my consuming a lot of ATP and those kinds of things. That's all the enzyme is doing it. So, so this is complex. It is very, very um, intricate uh, uh, phenomena. So, but the, the f current focus, in the past, we also are focused on transcriptomics because the transient is easier to obtain. Um, but, it, but it's flexible, but it generates a lot of noise. So nowadays, because the, we sort of go back, and because of the sequencing technology uh, available uh, to us at this moment, in, in past, in 1995, when this whole human genome was sequenced, it cost a billion dollars to sequence 20 times of your genome from every single base pair sequenced 20 times. Now it's about $1,000. So that's a million times different. And that's why it enables us to understand the disease is at light speed now compared to five, ten years ago. That's the major difference. And that, that's not only it, and that's what we will build on it and we'll start to understand the other thing like proteomics and metabolomics. Hopefully, by, by knowing from DNA and through this, we start from the genotype and the ultimate phenotype, we can understand how cancer is built and how do we deal with cancer. So this is, a, a for for a um, in cancer biology, it will, will, you know everybody will know this so-called cancer hormones have been 
proposed for many, but 10, 20 years, and it's been highly cited. It's just because cancer is a cell within our cell, try to be, you know, dominate, uh, dominant, and try to gain the, all the capacity that we have by di di differentiated and and by bec acquiring ma multiple uh, activity and, and, and causing a disease. So, so, so this is just a, a preview, a, a background information for you guys to understand. It, it has changed so much from the very beginning when I was seeing cancer patients, when I was an intern trying to, to, to help them, and they were just like horribly uh, you know, disheartened because uh, the only thing I can say that you have cancer, I cannot do anything about it. Okay, so things change a lot. So in terms of kidney cancer, the, you know, the, the most known kidney cancer, and most of the people contracted, um, it is so-called clear cell kidney cancer, and and it's, it it we know it's a VHL disease, and and for suggesting VHL disease for a long time, but now with all the genomics, I can tell you this is really really a VHL disease, and and we make most progress of kidney cancer treatment on this disease, and that is exactly why I say one year to three, and then likely in five years, and the, and the goal of mine, and, and and I was talking to Dr. Dr. Moser was that we should try to actually try cure a significant amount of this disease before then we can actually say we make some progress. Then the, the other part of the, the disease, sorry, so the other non-clear cells, so we'll call non-clear cells because it's just so many different of them. They have papillary, they have papillary type 1, type 2, they have chromophobe, they have a TFE3 tumor, they have medullary type, they have collecting tuck type, and there's something that we actively classifying, so unclassified. So these are all based on histology. <coughs> these are not molecular characterization. These are all just based on histology. And there are other disease that are based on more like molecular characterization. So this the kidney cancer is fascinating. That's because that I'm studying and, it, and all the patient I'm taking care of. It's just because it's a disease of many, many, many other diseases. Not like prostate cancer is one disease, but maybe a few diseases. Lung, maybe three, four disease. This is like a disease of maybe ten disease, and in individual one of them involve many, many different kind of uh, a mutation. Like SDHB patient, I've seen three of them for the past two, three years. That only like maybe twenty family been identified in the whole world. So you know, so and the, the problem is that we we know how to treat this disease, and it, you know, just Janice talk about it, you know, you know, you know there's the chemotherapy was the only way that I can. Uh, that we can treat patient, and that that you know some patients, uh, you know, we need to know better how to use them. Um, but the, the, at that time, the median survival for five is, is about a year, and now it's much better. We move the curve, and in the past, the clear cell disease is the bad disease, but now you can see here the non-clear cell become a bad disease because we move this curve from here and here, and this disease, the other twenty-five percent, then basically are left. Um, uh, uh, no trial and no meaningful trial and try to understand that. But, but hopefully by understanding the molecular makeup of the disease, hopefully we can figure out how to treat them more specifically instead of just say, okay, you, you have kidney cancer, even you are non-clear cell kidney cancer, but we just treat you as clear cell <coughs> kidney cancer because we have no drug for it. Okay, so that's the problem that we are facing. So the, the, the genomic studies now has been very clearly suggests that clear cell type kidney cancer, the majority of you know, the patient here are, are patients or families, and the, the, the type that they involve is called clear cell. And it is a, it's a one of the key feature is the chromosome uh, 3P loss. And the, the chromosome loss is because the first event is a loss of a gene called VHL. Uh, and, this, and, and, and VHL is on 3P, so you need to lose both good copies of the so-called tumor suppressor so that cancer can cancer t uh, take place. Uh, and uh, the, the key feature of these complex is regulate a, 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 phenom a, a protein, um, it's called HIF uh, family, it's called hypoxia-inducible factor. And these family proteins mainly induce you know, hypoxia uh, vessel formation. And you think about it, th this is, it's part of our body response. It's, if you have under hypoxia condition, this gene needs to be stabilized and they stimulate blood vessel formation. That's why clear cell kidney cancer is full of blood vessel. And that's why the drug that works, not a chemotherapeutic agent, the drug works the best 
the change the way we treat kidney cancer is the targeted therapy targeting blood vessel. Okay, so that's what changed the practice. And then the other thing that we know is about mTOR inhibitors. It's been proposed maybe working here, maybe working there. Nobody really understands what's really going on. I think we may start to learn more about this. And, uh, and as you got kidney cancer, clear cell kidney cancer, very interesting. For some reason, it has to go through some reason to activate TOR pathway. That's why TOR inhibitor is important. And that's why TOR inhibitor is the first, is the, the kidney cancer is the first in, approved indication for mTOR inhibitors. So we have made a lot of progress. And these are the timeline that you can see from, you know, the, from 2005, the SORF thing approved to 2012, I said it approved. We moved the curve from one to two and a half, almost to three. But the problem is that we, lots of, it's about 20 to 30% better if patient than like this, tumor shrink. About 50% of patients draw stabilized uh, for like a year or so, and then start to progress. But here's about 20% of them, even within the clear, so they behave poorly. And some of them die very, very fast. And they, 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 these are the patients that, that I, I, I try to learn more and, and, and try to make them look like this. And, instead of us all dying like within three to six months. Um, but having said that, that, that's why the, the first layer of heterogeneity and complexity, and I think they are genomic determinants to determine who, which one is this, which one is that, which one is this. I think I have some evidence for that, but I don't want to bring it up to you guys to kind of complete, because everything is way, way too complicated. But one thing I can tell you about is through the genomic studies, now we begin to understand Kidney cancer, a, a clear cell kidney cancer, is a VHO disease. The VHO is mainly mutated. And there are some other genes, you know, also mutated uh, at high frequency, like PBIM1, ZD2, BEP1. These are all names. Like one of the two 20,000 genes that we have in our bodies. And the reason they are important because they, when they mutate it, they make the cell um, give them more power. Uh, give them more of the unwanted phenotype for our whole by whole organism, and they become try to become they differentiate, they proliferate, they don't die and take over the host. Uh, it's a lose lose situation because the cancer never propagate become another human being. They all die. So anyway, so so we know much more about this, and they actually tell us who will do better, who will do worse. Because the problem is that in, the, the issue what I had was. In, Maybe like 60, 70 percent of patients will, will be cured by just surgery. The problem is, maybe maybe 20 percent of them will develop disease 20 years later, or some of them will disease two years, three years, four years, five years. So we spend millions, billions of dollars trying to figure out who will recur, who will not, and then we develop all kind of um, 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 the nomogram trying to f predict. But there's but. Uh, the, the study that we have done, and, and it's not included here, you sh we should be able to kind of build a, a molecular feature and try to understand who will likely develop recurrence, who will not, instead of monitoring everybody exactly the same. And that's, that's to me, that's, um, I, I hate to say that, I kind of said it several times in the past, and I think that's very, I don't want to say it. it's stupid, but, uh, but that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> Because and then because it's, the reason it's stupid is because you spend billions of dollars, you will take ten thousand patients, and you are not going to get the answer, because it's just not the right way to do it. And that's why the that's why health cost is so much because you don't select out the right patient to do the right thing, and that's cost. That's why it's so expensive. Okay, so the you know I talk about you know the genomic studies that you know I talk about clear cell a little bit, but now you know we we, we actually started to know more about, you know, chromophobe type, uh, kidney cancer, you know, and, and, and it's, it's another type of kidney cancer. It's very fascinating because this disease has multiple chromosomal loss. It lost chromosome, you know, 1, 2, 6, 10, 13, 17. It's kind of very, very defective tumor, but the problem is why would it, this so defective tumor losing chromosomes, so should be a very wimpy tumor. How come they, if some of them, about 5 to 10 percent of this disease actually develop metastasis? Uh, so we have some idea about maybe what's happening and, 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 and so on and so forth. So the other thing is like, you know, papillary, you know, TCGA efforts has been trying to standard study this disease and we, you know, we like we'll be publishing this um, uh, this year, in 2015. And then some other disease, 
uh, I think I, I began to know more about this disease, and then we have cr classified this. We think this is about three to four different diseases, at least molecularly. Uh, and these diseases, we have sort of pretty much better understand molecular handling of what these are. These two um, are the one that at this moment we really don't know much. Uh, and this one happened, imaginarily happened in uh, most of the African American uh, who has a sickle cell trait. And th those patients always come, if a patient comes to see me, it's about 20 some years old, early 20s or early 30s, and an African American a patient, uh, before they came working in the door, I said, this patient most likely have this bad disease and it's super aggressive. Okay, and the most of the kidney cancer treatment nowadays that we have do not touch it. So this is again, so this is the genomic studies that were telling you that you know the kidney clear cell is losing three P, but the you know, chromophore is losing one, two, six, ten, thirteen, seventeen. It, it's it's very crazy that you, it's very very defective. How come it become aggressive? So you know, so that's something that that that, that needs to be uh, studied in the future. So the the cancer it's it's. It, genetically, a Darwinian way, way to think about it, it starts with this, it exactly the single cell, but it starts to acquire different mutation. And if you develop, you know, evolve, acquire different mutation, you can consider it as a tree and maybe a different kind of tree. But if, if before, even they are evolving, if they are it's within, you know, it's a localized disease, you know, surgeon can just sort of cut it out, just cut the tree, whatever the tree, to come, whatever complex the tree is, they cut it out, you know, when the, when the tree is gone, why do you need to worry about the intratumor heterogeneity of the primary site? There was a big paper published by Charlie uh, Roy Master in 2012 and triggered this whole wave of understanding uh, the, the heterogeneity. But to me, the heterogeneity of the primary tumor is, is, is important in predicting who is going to respond or who is going to re relapse down the road but it's not as important in terms of do we really know, do you know how complex it is. If you, if you see many, many mutations, they are, these, these are passenger mutations have nothing to do with the parcel genesis of disease. Why would you care? So surgery can take care of it. The problem is that when the disease spread, then, it start to, then we start to encounter a problem. We need to deal with the heterogeneity. Um, and in the past, it's very, you know, the, the treating the kin cancer is really, you know, old days, like before, even before immunotherapy is chemotherapy. Just, just like a nuclear war, like bomb, then everything get normal tissue get hurt, t tumor tissue get hurt, then hopefully the, you know normal tissue can recover better, tumor tumor tissue get killed more, and that's the that's the the way of treating cancer in the, the very beginning, and then a targeted therapy that you know you, you try to find out where the the, the problem is and target it, and hopefully you can get rid of the disease, and now that the immunotherapy and, and something else that, that in a pipeline. So this is the paper I was talking about that, you know, if you take kidney cancer, it's the half fascinating disease. If you take, this is one patient, and if you take tumor from there here, different region of the primary, or from the metastasis, you can figure out that it are carrying different kind of mutations. And the problem is that the interesting thing that is trying to teach us, it, it, it diverged out crazily, but they actually, for example, the, in this tumor, these this different regions, they all start with VHL mutation. And this guy here branch out, they mutate CD2. And this totally different tumor also mutates CD2, but different ways to mutating it. So it's kind of fascinating, right? But if you start with one mutation, why would you, uh, why would you acquire a mutation? But you also on the same gene. So just in there is a, 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 a reason that you need to do that. So it, it's not really just like a tree, and, and I'll try to kind of illustrate this way, that the way I think about cancer, that is, you know, genetically it looks like a tree, but phenotypically, as, as I said, at the end output is like you need to acquire all the cancer phenotype. That is, they need to acquire different mutation of gene, and gene translate into the, the phenotype, the, the cancer phenotype. But once you started, and actually it, it need, you have for some disease, for kidney cancer, like for example, they want to go through VHL, but later on they have to go through some gene to gain additional activity. But it's only, once it started, it has to go through the pathway. It's, it has to go through the same river, and it is already predetermined. It's not, it's complex, but it's not complex, as complex to a degree that we think it's just too, too bad we cannot do anything, because they have to converge on certain genes. And the reason they converge on genes is because they want to converge on function. The reason they want to converge on function or pathways is because they want to gain common 
additional tumor phenotype. Okay, so the easiest way I see it is is this is my own personal, you know, view of cancer is, is I think it's 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 like a river. You start with something, and then you you know you start to branch out, but you have to converge, and then converge again is a, a gene level. It can be at a pathway level, but ultimately it is the phenotype level. And that's why if you t if it's a clear cell cancer, you start with the BHL mutation, you deal with the BHL, it works. If you and then you started, you know, maybe converge at, at mTOR somewhere, so you block mTOR, it works. But whenever it get to too late, I call it a later, they start to acquire all kinds of weird mutation. That's why you cannot even deal with it, and because lots of them start to replace the the activity that can you know render by the earlier mutation, and it's become very difficult. But that's the the opportunity of immunotherapy. The immunotherapy actually does not, this may be actually uh, give you a immune system more target to deal with. That's why immunotherapy is part of the game. And I always, you know, and the reason immunotherapy is kind of interesting is, um, you know, the, the, we have our own immunity. We were, we born with our immunity. And the immunity is really try to tease out what you use yourself so it's called tolerance. I want to say, okay, this is mine. I don't want to attack it. And if it's from foreign, it's a viral infection or bacterial infection, you get rid of it. So the strongest infection is acute infection, you get rid of it. And, and then it, you live with your body, right? Every single cell body. You need to live with them through your lifespan. So you need to develop a lot of tolerance. And the cancer cell is, is part of it, but it's just a little bit different. Because they, they may have cry this mutation or that mutation may be a little bit different, it's a little bit dysregulated. So, so the immune, the, the immune checkpoint block okay, basically is just dialed down the activity, okay? So now you try to recognize this by increasing your immunity and decrease the tolerance. So the toxicity you can imagine is autoimmunity. So it's very simple. You think about it, you dial down your immune system and what happens, what you're gonna see is the immune, uh, autoimmunity, autoimmune disease. So, you know, I'll talk to uh, about Brickland uh, 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 and, and, and uh, and then my guy can say they oh like immunotherapy is great it's important and, and I think it is correct, but but I always also reminded them that that we need to take all things into consideration immunotherapy you know targeted therapy maybe even chemotherapy, and treat figure out who should get what then get and then you will, in the trial that way will be much much more meaningful, and then and the last thing I was trying to tell you that in the future there's another another thing that, that people start to explore um, and, and, and that maybe actually contribute in, in, in the future uh, treatment is some other metabolic pathway. So again, you start with DNA, RNA, protein, metabolize, and then the, 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 it's, it's basically trying to do something. Build up the DNA, building DNA, building protein, building all those kind of things. So, some disease, especially kidney cancer, I think will be very, very, kidney cancer and pancreatic cancer, very, very metabolic driven disease. I didn't have time to talk about it, but it's really, really a metabolic driven disease. So I think metabolic treatment will be kind of interesting uh, thing to look into uh, for the future um, for p some kind of cancer type. Just like immunotherapy will work on some cancer type, not all cancer type. Immunotherapy will work on smoker lung because it mutated heavily work on UV melanoma because it mutated heavily and it generated lots of new antigen. The way you work on kidney cancer, you know, I've been thinking so much uh, recently, so it be really, could be kidney cancer is really a, a very immunogenic disease. It's not a mutation. We know it's not a mutation because the mutation is not that high. But anyway, so, so um, that's my take on it. And so, so that's um, my 25, 30 minutes.